being a Broadway performer is pretty cool. And a lot of hard work. But getting there is even harder. I'm going to tell you all about it. I'm Adrian Walker. Welcome to 32 Bar Cut. Bum, ba -da -dum, bum, bum, ba. Welcome everyone to another episode of Broadway Banter. I'm doing the introduction today. I don't know why. I just felt like it. You felt like you felt moved. Because I'm the maestro. Um, yeah, he felt moved. Anyway, welcome or welcome back to Broadway Banter on 32 Bar Cut. I am Adrian Walker. I'm Austin Cook. And today we are going to talk about being an understudy slash swing slash standby. Stand by. So. The first thing is, what's the difference? What's the difference? An understudy is someone that may be in the show, may not be in the show. No, but is in the show. In the show. An understudy is someone that is in the show, in the ensemble, and they are, or principals, sometimes principals understudy other principals. They're in the show and they are covering another part. An understudy is also called a cover, you know, shorthand. That's right. And so that means that they have to learn everything about that part, that track, and whenever they're called upon to do it, they step into costume, they go on stage, and they do it. Fun fact, covering comes from the opera world. It was first in the opera world before musical theater. I didn't know that. Fun fact, opera came before musical theater. I knew that. Thus, covering came from opera. Well, that makes sense. That's been our fun fact today. So then we have two other things. So it basically goes in order. Swing, first you have swing. Swing is off stage, right? Swing basically means you're not on stage, you're not performing, you're off stage, and you're learning tracks in the show. Then you have understudy. You're on stage performing some role, and you're also covering a role that would be deemed higher up in the show. Yeah. And then also, the last one, a standby. A standby is similar to a swing, except standby's load is heavy as concerning um, the role. So normally for like a Broadway star, Adina Menzel in Wicked had a standby. Someone, their only a task- A standby yeah. Their only task was to be off stage, ready to go, if Adina needed her to cover for her. So that's a standby. Standby is somebody who knows the track and normally it's only one thing mm -hmm. for a standby. Um, and it, it varies from show to show as well as regional theater versus Broadway. Like for example, in The Lion King, we do have a couple of standby actors that are ready and willing to go on for Scar or Pumbaa or Timon. And they, they are the standby for more than one role but that doesn't happen a lot especially if the role is really meaty and heavy like for tina turner for example um i believe that adrian warren has not only a matinee tina but there's also a standby tina so um for roles that are really heavy where an, uh, you cannot go on you cannot do the show without that role um a standby is very important and they need to be in the building at you know so exactly so that i think that hopefully you I understand hope covered it. if you have any questions about it you can always hit the google or let us know in the comments yeah let us know in the comments and if we said something a scenario that contradicts what you've seen or heard hey it's all different in different regions sometimes we're just talking about our experiences and what usually goes down in the projects we've done. We're gonna talk about everything today. We're gonna to talk about the pros, the cons of being an understudy, but before we get to that, that'll be later in the video. You go ahead. I'd like to have a quick word from our sponsor, 32 oh Bar God. Cut. I thought you were gonna say We have cool else. things. We have water bottles. We have a coffee mugs. We have lots of cool stuff. We have yeah. shirts. We have all the stuff. Go over and check it out, 32barcut.com slash shop okay now getting into it mm -hmm. both adrian and i have been understudies yes i have understudied quite a few roles i've understudied bess uh in porgy and bess dina in dream girls as well as michelle in dream girls uh, i was the understudy for iphigenia a greek tragedy trilogy um iphigenia and alice and i was the understudy for joanne in rent and guess what I did all of those productions and I never went on. So I am gonna give you the skinny on how to prepare as an understudy, but unfortunately, because I do not have experience in actually going on as an understudy, Austin is gonna cover all of that. Yeah, I was an understudy for Million Dollar Quartet. I was Jerry Lee Lewis uh, understudy slash standby. Mm -hmm. 
um, where I was off stage, not performing in the show, just waiting in the wings, my friends. Yeah. And let me tell you, I have a, a special place in my heart for understudies. It's a very difficult uh, thing to do. It's uh, it's just really difficult. I'm a performer. People that know me well know that I'm a performer. I'm maybe a music director and pianist, but I'm definitely like an onstage performer. Is it's always my what I love to do. Um, and being an understudy for standby, I thought that I would, you know, love it. Mm, I did not love it. It was very difficult. Um, while I loved the show and I loved being around all the people, man, it is hard to be a performer and to not get to perform night after night after night. That is a tough thing. So we're going to talk about that. Yeah. We uh, also had a really good conversation on 32 Bar Cut the Show with Roman Banks. That episode will be airing quite some time from July. this episode. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, depending on when you're watching this and it's past July 2021, you can check out his episode. But he talks about being a standby for Dear Evan Hansen and what that was like. And I think I remember you talking about it that like it was just, you know, the show and you have to sit ready and you may not go on for weeks yeah. because the person you're covering is fine. They're not ill. They don't have any sick, uh, any personal days to fulfill. And yep. they don't make money when they're not on. So it is in their best interest to be on. That's right. And some of uh, shows won't have a policy of swinging people on. Yeah. Like a rotation in. What does swinging people on mean? Well, it just means where they will man make it mandatory to every week, every two weeks, every month swing people on which means like i am guaranteed a performance and, and it's also swinging people out swinging people on swinging people out so that means that the actor who plays jerry lee lewis regularly yeah he still gets swung paid. out and then austin get to play in his place you may ask why don't they always do that that seems like a good thing to do well let me tell you two reasons number one the reason they don't do it is because normally the on stage performer is considered a star they're considered higher up on the yeah. ladder the audience may deem it as a slight if they're not performing. That's reason number one, they don't do it. And reason number mm -hmm. two, they don't do it is because it costs money. In order I'm to swing to that too. in order to swing somebody on or off, they have to pay not only the principal performer for swinging them off, they still have to get paid. They also have to pay the understudy. So it's more money. So that's two reasons why they don't do it. I was going to add to that, that they're a star is that uh, a lot of times, even if it's not a star, for some reason, the audience gets in their head mm -hmm. that if they're not seeing the original cast or who it, whoever's in the playbill, that they're being slighted in some way. So I've, I've been on That's tour. Right. Well, I've only done one tour. I don't know what I'm saying. But in Dirty Dancing, whenever our um, whenever Tierney, Christopher Tierney had to call out, he played Johnny in Dirty Dancing. Whenever he had to call out for an injury or whatever, they would announce the role of Johnny will be played by whoever, whoever is understanding him or covering him that day, and you would hear like a sigh or an audible awe, like, oh, from the audience as if they had been gypped. Well, they don't know Christopher Tierney. Uh, well, I assume they don't. Maybe they don't. in their book, he was a star, but they don't. people assume they're not getting what they should be getting or what they pay for. And um, that's tough, too. It's very tough. Time for a personal story. Let me tell you, my friends, many, 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 many nights, difficult nights, on tour with Million Dollar Quartet playing Jerry Lee Lewis, I'd get swung on or put on or Martin K was the uh, principal um, Jerry Lee Lewis, phenomenal pianist. Check him out, by the way, Martin K. Um, amazing. He used to, he has his own Vegas piano show now, I think. Anyway. Wow. Fantastic. Really nice guy. He would go out and I would go on stage. Now, the start of Million Dollar Quartet, if you've never seen it or don't know, the curtain's down, right? And then right behind the curtain, is the four principal guys in the show and we're ready to perform because we start the show with oh well it's a one for the money two for the show baby ready not go get go okay so we're going to start off the show with a bang there's a pre-show announcement the lights go down as the lights are going down we're excited we're in place we're getting frozen in our special and then they make the dreaded announcement okay. and they have to the dreaded they have announcement. To make an announcement they don't have to there well, they, are, can put an insert. they can put an insert, <laughs> okay, which costs to. money. Sometimes they oh, don't want to no, do it. Oh, I didn't realize yes, that. Yes, there are many options in our union of what they have to do, but they have to pick one. They just have and to the notify. Cheapest one, yeah. The cheapest one is to just get on the God mic, the stage manager, and say, ladies and gentlemen, 
At tonight's performance, the role of Jerry Lee Lewis will be performed by Austin Cook. Then, guess what, my friends? Guess what I have to listen to on stage behind the curtain? I hear the whole audience, like she was saying, oh. Murmur, 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 A thousand murmur, people, murmur. a thousand people going, <laughs> oh. And now I have to perform for them. Yeah. That does not make you feel good, my friends. It makes you feel pretty bad. So you have to grow thick skin for that. You have to grow thick skin in a lot of ways yeah. to be an understudy. It's an extremely difficult thing to do. So I hope all of our audience friends that are watching the show trying to get some insight about Broadway and some behind the scenes, let me tell you, my friends, if an understudy is going on, don't go, oh, hey, let's do the opposite for once, okay? Let's have a big cheer. Let's say, woohoo! Because yeah. guess what? This person has worked their rear end off to get where they are. And guess what? In most cases, there's no difference between the on stage and the off stage, okay? They both have busted their butt. Really, the only difference is one has had the opportunity to do the role hundreds and hundreds of times, and the other person, this might be their second, third, fourth. It might be they don't get to do this very often. So in some ways, you as the audience are getting someone who's fresh, fresh passionate, and ready to do it. And that's exciting to watch, my friends. Yeah. So let's not throw them any shade sitting out there before the show okay have we learned something all right. today all right <laughs> all right no i feel good you know you feel good you got that out i feel like i'm standing on the soapbox for all understudies that have ever done the hardest job in theater i'm telling you covering swing understudies is difficult so now for the reason why you're probably watching this video what are the responsibilities of an understudy how do you prepare what do you need to do all of the things so let's start so um let's start with a regular rehearsal process where everyone's rehearsing at the same time you're not a replacement but you have been hired to be the understudy slash cover slash swing for a specific track and mm -hmm. you need to learn that track yep. the way that i have gone about this now mind you i've all i've learned all the roles i've covered i've just never gotten the chance to go on for them but the way I like to go about this rehearsal process is whenever the, the character I'm covering is called, I'm called as well, whether they write it in the, in the book or not. And if um, it's a closed rehearsal, then I'll ask, can I, can I sit in? Um, because sometimes you will have rehearsal processes where it's just the, the actors and not the rest of the ensemble can't come in. But if you're covering that role, it is your right to ask, hey, can I sit in on this rehearsal? I would really love to hear what the director has to say about this character. I would really love to write down the blocking. I know that it may change, but I'd like to stay with the process as much as I can. This can become challenging for understudies that are also in the ensemble and have to learn their ensemble track at the same time that they're learning the track they're covering. But that is part of the gig. So you make it work as much as you can. And what you can also do is if you're all, all called at the same time and you're split into different rooms where you're learning your ensemble stuff and you're learning the principal stuff, then what you can do is you can go up to stage management at the end of each rehearsal or at a break and ask, hey, can I get the notes from this? Can I get the blocking from this? What you shouldn't do, what you should never do is go up to the actor that is portraying that role and asking them for help. That is not the route. When I did my first understudy gig, it was for Porgy and Bess, and I was understudying Bess, and I did not know that. And I did go up to her and ask her what, it, you know, because we were rehearsing all at the same time. And um, it wasn't the right thing to do. And I regret doing that, but I, I didn't know. And so I, I, wanna, I wanna share that with you all so you don't make the same mistake that I did. I also wanna talk about something very important when it comes to understudies that's a big mental way to look at an understudy that is crucial to being a successful understudy. Mm. And that is, you are not the same as the principal. You're another and person. And I mean that in, in many different ways. Let me clarify what I mean. The principal gets the role, they get to approach it with a fresh take. Mm -hmm. They get to do their portrayal. They get to banter with the director, make choices. They get to do this. They get to do that. They get to, they get the choreography that pop, pop, pop. And they, they get, get the to choreography go, that fits them. They get to go yeah. pop, pop, pop. They get to do something else. And the choreographer's like, I love that. Keep it. You know, they do all, the show is for them. Let me tell you, my friend, as an understudy, it ain't about you and you got to get mentally in the right place to be an understudy because the crucial part is when you go in you can't go pop 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 because that's what you want to do and expect the praise they're going to say why didn't you do it like what we're used to like what you're supposed to do mm -hmm. you're supposed to go pop 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 and then in your mind you're going but that's what she does i wanted to do my own no 
Yeah. You don't get to do your own thing, my friends. I'm sorry. That's just how it is. And the more we can wrap our mind around the understudies, it, it's a different task than the principal. The task is to be the principal, to go where they go, to do what they do. That's the job. And a lot of times, understudies have problems with stage management, company management, the show in general. They're very upset a lot. And the main reason for that is a lack of understanding of the understudy job, which is unfortunately, it's not to be your artistic self. Your job is to be that principal. That's unfortunately, that's the gig. And also on the flip side too, um, it's that you'll never be exactly the role, I mean, the person that you're covering. So you do need to do it the way that you can do it. So it's it's a balance of that. It's um if if uh you're covering uh if you're in Sister Act. That's the only example I can think of right now. If you're in Sister Act and you're covering the star um her name starts with a D. Who's the star of Sister Dolores. Act? Dolores. Dolores, thank you. And you're covering Dolores. And the 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 actor that you're covering does uh sings it a certain way, but it's a free moment, a riff moment, and you can't quite hit those notes like that then practice it your way. Make sure when you go in your pudding, you do it that way. And that's how you do the show. So you, th there's, there's a balance of knowing what your abilities are and what you should be doing and a balance of not stealing the moments or um, putting too much air between scenes and just, you know, mm -hmm. you don't want to steal the show. You just want to fit in, have a great show and fit right back out. And, and it, it is tough. I mean, it's very tough. But and that's what that's what's required. That is the job. You want to make sure this is something that took me years to learn, my friends. So you're getting a veteran's experience on being an understudy. I'm telling you, the more you can change the philosophy in your mind of being an artist and needing when you go when you're an understudy, needing to be an artist and like express yourself, the more you can strip that away and be like, this is my job. Mm -hmm. My job is to do this thing. Let me come to work. To, to be the understudy for this role, I didn't, I'm not the principal. I'm not the, well, the principal is the wrong word. I'm not the main uh, person the in the track, person, the regular yeah. performing person in the track. My job is to support the show. And then do your cabaret at night, do your solo show, find other ways, do your solo album, whatever it yeah. is, find other ways to fulfill your artistic expression. Because if you need that understudy performance that you only get once every three months and you need to like fulfill something, it's it's not gonna work out. It will not it will not be fulfilling because it is sporadic be and it's you never know when you're gonna go on unless mm -hmm. the person you're covering has a, has scheduled dates. So it is not something that you can use as fulfillment. But just for the basics, like you wanna know the blocking for lighting. You wanna know where you need to be for your lighting cues. You wanna know your entrances. You want to maybe have a moment if, you, if you're a leading lady and you're co if you're covering a leading lady and, you, and there's a leading man in the show and you need to have a moment with them, make sure that you pull them aside and say, hey, how, how does this feel? Anything like that. If you need a, if you have a different dance partner or anything like that, make sure that you at least touch that person if you get a chance before you go on, just so that you feel comfortable because uh, we're people and we get used to what we're used to. And even though um, we want to be accommodating, what I have seen is that uh, people who are used to their partners on stage are less accommodating for the understudies. And it's just a culture that happens with theater. I wish that wasn't the case, but it does happen. And that's because people don't like change and they don't like feeling uncomfortable. And if someone's on stage that day that makes their job harder, then then they're gonna have tension. And so it's just something to keep in mind that I think it's a really good as an understudy, as a cover, to have a lightness about you and a positivity about you because you may be met with opposition and it's not your fault, it's just people are being people. What she just said is so crucial. It's important that as an understudy you have a positivity about you. Don't fall into the trap of being an understudy who always complains, who's always upset, yeah. who's always whining about not performing, who's always having a problem. That is the trap. Most understudies fall into that trap. Try not to be that person. And I think it helps with understanding what we're talking about is going in with different expectations. Really, 
What's great, one of the pros about being an understudy is that if you treat it like a class. This is an opportunity to perform with other great actors, great directors, maybe a great Broadway show, to make money, to get benefits. Build your resume. To build your resume. You have to treat it as a class. This is an opportunity in rehearsals. You'll get to play this great role in rehearsals with all these other actors and get to practice this role and you're getting paid to do it. You're getting paid to take this class. Yeah. You really gotta change the way you think about this and being an understudy, if you have that mindset, is a really special thing. We should, before we close out, talk a little bit about rehearsals and the put in rehearsal process for mm -hmm. an understudy. So when you, uh, when you sign the contract to become a cover or understudy, you will uh, most likely not get any attention put on you or what you've learned or what you know and don't know until after the show has opened. So there'll be a rehearsal pre period, then the tech week, and then previews if you're in a situation where there are previews, and then the show will open and then they will have time to start rehearsing understudies and swings and making sure that they know everything they need to know. Well, guess what? The day of your first performance, the day of your first preview, no matter if you've had a rehearsal or not, you have to know your track because now you're in performance mode and that means that it, at a drop of a dime, the person you're covering could get injured or sick or God forbid in an accident and then they're expecting you to go on because that's your job, whether you've been rehearsed or not. So keep that in mind. There is a responsibility there and it is a self-motivating responsibility. No one's going to be checking you to make sure that you know what you're supposed to know. And once you've gone through your rehearsal process, however long it's going to be, um, and you've opened the show, then the rehearsal process for the swings and the understudies begin. That means longer hours for you. That means when normally you would just be chilling through the day and then coming in for the show, you're probably going to be in rehearsal all day, sticking around and then staying for the show. Then you're going to have a put in rehearsal and the put in rehearsal is not always the most organized experience. Only the people who are understudies are called. The rest of the cast isn't called. So there's a lot of missing roles. <laughs> probably the roles that you would normally be playing you're playing your you're playing the role you're covering so those roles are missing if that makes sense does that make sense mm. and so um the put in rehearsals are your best chance to put on what your show will be it's your best and only chance to perform what you expect your show will be because you will not get another chance with lights or you don't get a chance with the put in rehearsal for costumes or costume changes, any of that. And um, I think costume changes is a good thing to talk about too, because when you're an understudy and you have a quick change, um, that can be challenging. And it may be something you wanna chat with a dresser about before you have to go on, yeah. just so that you know, okay, what happens, what, take, what comes off first, what happens here, what happens there, so that you can practice it. Um, and I feel yeah. like I feel like well, we should do a part two of this because there's, we will. there's we more will. we can cover. But um, we don't want to make our videos way too long that you guys have to watch them in segments or anything like that. I was just going to say that when it comes to put-ins, basically, just know that it's not going to be the show. Mm -hmm. That's the advice. It's yeah. not the show. You're not going to have the official lights. You're not going to have the orchestra. You're not going to have that. It's just to get you on stage, mm -hmm. to get you through the show and to at your spots. Yeah. That's it. I'm sure you all have lots of questions, so drop them down below. If you like this content, if you like what we're saying, uh, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We're coming to you every week with more tips and career advice and personal stories about what we've been through. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching Broadway Banter. And uh, anything yeah, else? That's it. We'll see you next time. All right. Bye.